In this final video of the series, I will review the muscle control formula and then give a third example of a concentric MTC action. To begin, let's review the muscle control formula. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. Step three is to identify the type of MTC action, whether that be concentric, eccentric, or isometric. Step four is to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. And finally, we put it all together in step six to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. In this case here, we have horizontal adduction or horizontal flexion. So as we go from position A to position B, we horizontally adduct the arm. Now, it's important that I point out what my axes of rotation look like. And you can see the bottom left-hand corner here, the axis of rotation that had been used in previous videos is the gold axis, which is an anterior-posterior axis, which is coming out of the screen. I could also have a medial lateral axis displayed here in green, but for this video, we are going to be showing the red axis, which is a longitudinal axis. And as we can see, that horizontal adduction is occurring about that longitudinal axis. So in step one, when we identify the joint motion, we're identifying horizontal adduction. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. In other words, what movement would the external force produce if there were no active muscles? In this particular case here, we can see the effect of the external force, or gravity, would be to rotate the arm downward. So if we ID the effect of the external force, it could be adduction or extension, depending on the arm position. The point being that it's occurring in a different plane. For step three, we identify the type of MTC action, whether it's concentric, eccentric, or isometric. We will use a decision diagram to guide our thinking. First, we identify the joint motion and the effect of the external force. Then we have to ask ourselves a question about the movement direction, and we're going to relate that to the external force. In other words, what is the direction of the joint motion in relation to the direction of the effect of the external force? One possibility we may have is that the effect of the external force and the joint motion are in opposite directions. Another case we may have is where the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in the same direction. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in opposite directions, then we conclude that we have a concentric MTC action. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in the same direction, then we have to decide or determine the movement speed. And so we have another question we have to ask ourselves. Is the joint motion occurring faster or slower than the effect of the external force alone? If the joint motion is occurring faster than the effect of the external force alone, then we conclude that we have a concentric MTC action. If the joint motion is slower than the effect of the external force alone, then we conclude that we have an eccentric MTC action. We can also have a case where there is no movement, in which case we would have an isometric MTC action. Or the joint movement could be across the external force, as in this case, where in other words they're occurring in different planes, in which case we would have another concentric MTC action. So let's return to our example. Again, in this example here, the joint motion is going to be occurring in the transverse plane, 
but the effect of the external resistance is going to be in the frontal plane. So here, when we are trying to identify the MTC action, we determine that the joint motion is across the external force. Therefore, we conclude that we have a concentric MTC action. Step four is to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. In this case here, our axis of rotation is a longitudinal axis through the humeral head. And therefore, the plane of movement is going to be in the transverse plane. Step five, we identify on which side of the joint axes the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. As you can see here in blue, the MTCs anterior to the axis of rotation are shortening as we go from A to B. So our shortening MTCs are on the anterior side of the joint. Those are going to be our horizontal adductors or our horizontal flexors. The muscles that will be lengthening are going to be on the posterior aspect, and they are our horizontal abductors or our horizontal extensors, which are not shown. For step six, we identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. We've already identified the fact that the MTC action is concentric. When we have a concentric MTC action, the MTCs that are shortening are going to be controlling the movement. And the MTCs that are shortening in this scenario are those on the anterior side of the axis of rotation, which are going to be our horizontal adductors. So the horizontal adduction is being controlled concentrically by the horizontal adductors. So let's review what we did in this video. Step one was to identify the joint movement or position, and we identified the joint movement as being horizontal adduction or horizontal flexion. Step two was to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position, and we determined that the effect of the external force, in this case gravity, was to rotate the arm downward. Step three was to identify the type of MTC action whether it was concentric, eccentric, or isometric. We determined that since the joint action was across gravity, that the MTC action was going to be concentric. In step four, we identified the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. We determined that the plane of movement was the transverse plane, and the axis of rotation was a longitudinal axis that went through the head of the humerus. Step five was to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs were lengthening and on which side the MTCs were shortening. We determined that the MTCs anterior to the axis of rotation were shortening and the MTCs on the posterior side of the axis of rotation were lengthening. Step six was to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. We already identified that we had a concentric MTC action, and we know with concentric MTC actions, the MTCs that are shortening will be controlling the movement. Since the horizontal adductors were shortening in this scenario, we can conclude that the horizontal adductors were controlling horizontal adduction concentrically.